In programming, the modulo operator is represented by the percentage sign, and it is not particularly intuitive compared to the usual ones like addition or division, which is why it has a special place in my heart, and it can also be very useful when working with expressions. The modulo operation returns the remainder of a division. It is basically a shorthand for doing a division of a number, taking the full integer from the result, multiplying that integer with the divider, and then subtracting the result from the initial number. In more practical terms for motion graphics, Modulo lets you easily create forever looping sequences of numbers, which is absolutely great for whenever you need something to blink, repeat, or cycle through. Here's a quick nerdy demo. We have numbers counting up from 0 to 10, and we are calculating a modulo from 3 for each of those numbers. 0 divided by 3 is 0, 1 divided by 3 is 0, and there's a remainder of 1, 2 divided by 3 is 0, and the remainder is 2, 3 divided by 3 is 1, but we don't care about that, all we care about is the remainder, which is 0. 4 divided by 3 is 1, and the remainder is 1. You can see that the result of modulo is a looping sequence of 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, as the numbers count up. If we change the modulo to, say, 5, we'll get a looping sequence of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, as each fifth number will divide fully by 5, and each next four numbers will give remainders of 1, 2, 3, 4, respectively. Here's an animated example of the same thing. We have numbers counting up, and we're calculating a modulo of 7 from these numbers. The result is a forever looping sequence of numbers going from 0 to 6. So where to use this? This can be very, very handy when you need to make something blink. If something's blinking, it means that it's periodically looping through two values of 0 and 1, or on and off. So to better visualize what's happening, let's write an expression in a source text parameter first. First, let's get time counting up. Um, and we want full seconds, so we'll wrap it up in math4 function so it will give us only the largest full integer. Then let's simply add modulo of 2, because we want this to be looping through two values, 0 and 1. The even numbers will return 0, and the odd numbers will return a remainder of 1. Our time number now is counting up once every second, so if we want it to be changing quicker, let's say twice a second, we need to multiply the time by 2. Let's now copy the expression and paste it into the opacity parameter of the thing we want to blink. And now the only issue is the opacity is going from 0 to 1, uh, so let's multiply it by 100, so it goes from 0 to 100. Now you have a blinking setup that will keep looping forever and you can change the speed of easily. Another great use for modulo is when you want to build a clock or a counter of some sort that needs to convert from seconds to minutes automatically. So let's do that. I have this text layer with a slider here. Let's enable expressions on the source text and link up the slider to a counter variable. This will be driving our counter animation. Let's create seconds and minutes variables, leave them blank for now. And let's create our output setup, which will be minutes, colon divider, followed by seconds. Now for seconds, we basically want them to reset to zero every time a counter reaches a multiple of 60. So let's do counter modulo 60. Let's set minutes to zero for now and test this out. As you can see, when the slider value goes past 60, they can start counting back up from zero. Now for minutes, we want them to increase by 1 for every multiple of 60, so let's simply divide the counter value by 60. This is not quite enough because we get these decimals, so we need to wrap it up in math floor again to get just the integer. Now the counter works as it should. Almost. When the seconds are under 10, you see that we're missing a 0. There are multiple ways you can fix that, here's one. We'll write a simple if statement, if the seconds are under 10, we will add a 0 before them. The variable seconds will be 0 plus seconds. Now you can see we get leading zeros. We're not quite done though, because when we keyframe the values of the slider, we get these crazy decimals. There's an easy fix for that, we just need to wrap the seconds variable in math round to round them off to nearest integer. Now we have a fully functioning counter of minutes and seconds that is driven by one single slider. You could apply the same logic to expand this to hours, days, weeks, months, decades. Another great use for modulo is for when you need to arrange things spatially in some sort of grid fashion. Here I have this dynamically generated grid from one of the previous tip videos. Every tile here is a separate layer, and all of them have the same expression applied on their position parameter that positions it in the grid. Based on its layer index, each layer knows its ID, the consecutive position in the grid it holds. They start at 0, so this one knows its item 0, this one knows its item 4, this one knows its item 7, this one knows its item 10. To position the items horizontally in the grid, we need to essentially loop through the numbers of 0 to 7, because each next row needs to start at a horizontal position of 0. To do that, we're simply calculating each item's ID modulo the maximum items per row and then multiplying it by the width of an item. This way, as the item IDs count up, the item horizontal position loops through the sequence of 0 to 7, making a grid. Powered by Modulo.